So we have a really interesting patient here, um, somebody who I've been seeing for a few years. Um, this patient wasn't able to do a single leg heel raise, and it goes back to a fracture, a Weber A fracture he had in 2017. So he had multiple MRI scans and there was a fragment of bone that was embedded into the FHL, the, uh, the flexor lucis longus tendon, at the back of the, at the, back of the talus. Now, uh, quite a few MRI scans later, they were not able to identify that, so he had many other interventions. He had uh, other injections in the foot and ankle, he had orthotics, he saw some world-class physios, he saw myself, multiple orthopedic surgeons. Eventually, he had surgery and they removed that fragment of the in, that was embedded into the FHL. So he was able to do a single leg heel raise but not quite, because he's got a plantar fibroma, which is sitting just there in the medial band of the fascia. Now, because of the plantar fibroma, he's unable to toe off on his first and second. He can, he can only toe off on the, um, on the lesser gears, so on his third to fifth. So you can see that he's building up a lot of strength on his lateral ankle ligaments uh, and that's the only way that he can toe off. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a uh, Kenalog injection under a patient-specific directive into the uh, medial band of the fascia into the plantar fibroma. Now there are alternatives to this. We've done a series of uh, shockwave treatments. The alternative is to have uh, radiotherapy. Uh, there's only one or two papers written on radiotherapy. Uh, collagenase is also a treatment option um, and surgery I think surgery is probably one of the last treatment options because the um, reoccurrence rate is very high also uh, most surgeons are going to remove quite a large chunk of the fascia as well so we're going to try a, uh, a fenestration technique into the fibroma itself to try and cause it to shrink now, one of the dangers of having a plantar fibroma is it can actually shrink the medial band of the fascia. So it can cause a sclerosis of the medial band of the fascia if you've had it for a long time. Now, we know, unfortunately, he's had it for many years, six years, I think. So quite some time. Um, I'm hoping that it's not going to affect it. What, the, what you'll see is right underneath there and you'll see the flexor hallucis longus tendon that's moving quite well the abductor hallucis muscle belly has also been impacted by the fibroma so it's actually impinging on the abductor hallucis muscle belly i'm quite old school when it comes to doing a tibial block block i still mark out the anatomical structures so for students that are watching whatever you do do not hit this artery <laughs> Wherever else you inject, you're not going to hurt the patient, really. Just do not hit this artery. So you want to just miss that, come posterior lateral to there, and you'll be fine. You okay? Yeah. Okay. So it's tight. It's tight. already. That means I'm in a good spot, mate. I am opting for a 27 gauge, 30 millimeter, half inch gray needle. Um, the advantage of such a small needle is, is it will primarily stay in the plantar fibroma, so uh, it, it won't it won't go past the plantar fibroma into the uh, medial band of the fascia. So this this is the plantar fibroma in question. Um, it's quite firm. It's just there. We're going to do it under ultrasound. Um, it's affecting his windlass. So when you actually try and get them, the medial band of the fascia taut, it's not possible to get it taut. And there's a, there's a difference between the both feet. There's a really good paper written by Karen, and I think it's 2014 or 18. I'll, I'll, I'll make a reference to it which describes all the different types of treatments that you can do for a plantar fibroma. I'm going to inject all the way out. 